All right, hey there. Welcome back to our series we're doing called The Ten Commandments of Progressive Christianity. If for some reason this is the first video that you're dropping into on this series of videos, we are going through Michael Kruger's book, The Ten Commandments of Progressive Christianity. Really catchy uh, yellow cover right here. Uh, my name's Bob. I'm one of the pastors here at Millington, and I am joined by... I'm Dave, one of the other pastors. That's right, to my to my left over there, So, uh, or I guess to the right if you're watching the video. Uh, we, we have covered eight different commandments of progressive Christianity. Uh, really has been an, in, an interesting and enlightening discussion. Uh, we've come to commandment number nine, which is a bit of a spicy commandment, um, and it goes like this. We should care more about love and less about sex. Uh, So here's how he begins the chapter. He says, as we've already observed, progressive Christianity is decidedly moralistic. What matters is not what you believe, but how you behave. How curious then that this approach is absent when it comes to issues regarding sex. When sex is in view, suddenly progressives are for moral freedom and moral choice, which... um, is evident in the ninth commandment, we should care more about love and less about sex. Now, th- this word love is, is a favorite word in today's culture, uh, but it's often used in nebulous terms. We should just love everyone, and uh, love is all you need, and, and things of that nature. Um, but should we not care about sex? Is that not something that's an important topic for all of us to consider? What do you, what do you think, Dave? Where, where's, uh, where, where do we begin with this? Love is love. I mean, where are we <laughs> what, going what else, wrong? What else needs to be said? Love I, is love. I don't want to yes. be a hater. So uh, this one's really complicated, and the messaging from a rhetorical standpoint is really effective. Uh, so, I mean, there's been... Well, a, who wouldn't want to love, right? right? What's the problem? Yeah, Isn't this exactly. what Jesus did? So, I mean, this, this particular generational shift has been um, significant in terms of the thinking on this yeah. issue. Yeah. What Kruger does in this chapter is he takes it in steps or stages, which I think is helpful mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. A, sort of a frog in the pedal kind of a frog in the kettle kind of approach. So step one is this: you got to tout the moral virtues of those who are in sexual sin. In other words, show people engaging in disputed sexual behavior as genuinely nice, genuinely wonderful, all around virtuous people. And mm-hmm. so when you display only the positive, then you start to second guess, you know, what's the matter with this sexual behavior? It, you know, these people are, are brilliant. They're kind. They're, they're welcome, welcoming. They're modest. Uh, so that's kind of step one. Uh, and that can be done just through mm-hmm, mm-hmm. desensitization. Maybe put them in a Disney movie. Maybe yep. <laughs> put them on every sitcom you can think of. Um, you know, tell stories that are really uh, heart heartstring pulling. So is he saying these steps are what progressive Christians are currently doing. Yeah. Let's okay. just walk down the staircase. How did we get to where we are today? So that's gotcha. the first step. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Then step two, insist that God has bigger things to worry about, right? So downplay God's mm-hmm. holiness. Uh, mm-hmm. God's not concerned about your bedroom. Um, you know, that doesn't bother him. There's much more pressing things in the world. Um, so that's kind of step two. Step three is show that the disputed sexual behavior leads to good results, uh, so um, this is this is when we talk about positive outcomes. It's going to help ameliorate other problems. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so uh, if if something feels good, then it must be good. If something um, has good outcomes, then you know what's the problem? Hey, if there's two people that are financially strapped uh, and living together, unmarried, makes things better for them. That's a good thing. Why would we not want to it's make a financially good better? decision? I mean, they were lonely. They needed yeah. companionship. Um, so that's a strategy. Step four is to portray those who are against certain sexual behaviors as mm-hmm. mean spirited mm-hmm. and cruel. Uh, so, uh, you know, every good story has to have a villain, has to have a foil, and it has to have a nemesis that you can root against. In this case, it would be the evangelical Christian. So we get to be the, the, yeah. the badge of the, uh, the evil, dishonor. mean, moral police, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, Vody Bauckham talks about this, and he calls it jamming. So if you would put the idea in someone's mind that uh, to be against something is immoral uh, and unethical, and it's it's just mean and cruel to be against it, then every time you think about this in your mind, you kind of have a, a conflict. So that's what our yeah. society has done. And then the last step is, I think a little bit sacrilegious, is always insist Jesus is on your side. Uh, so this is a justification. Get Jesus next to you and say, hey, you disagree with him. Right. 
I mean, um, you know, Jesus loves sinners. Jesus was gracious yeah. to everyone. Uh, he hated the Pharisees and the legalists. And, um, you know, we all know the stories about his yeah. kind words towards yeah. the the sinful woman who anointed him. And so you, you bring out some words of Jesus and you, you tout those as if Jesus is totally on your side about yeah. this. So what's the problem? Again, false dichotomy. So yeah, we should care about love. Yeah. Uh, and yes, we should also care about sex because God does. You can be compassionate and also remind people that God cares about sexual activity and is here to guide us towards sexual activity. What's missing from this whole thought is that God is holy. Right. And uh, right. it also misses the point that sin actually harms people. And so God has people's best interest in mind, which yeah. is why he gives us his guardrails, which is why he gives us his law. Uh, he's trying to protect us. And so this is a manufactured dilemma uh, that I, I don't think is biblical. And, um, you know, sometimes you hear like ethical cases like, well, would you would you rather have a child be an orphan or would you rather have them be raised by two gay parents? Uh, those kind of ethical conundrums, yeah. they kind of make you feel like, oh, well, there's a no-win situation. But there's an underlying idea there that difficult circumstances always justify uh, sinful behavior, which is, that's not a fair yeah. argument. Um, one scripture, as we kind of wrap up this one, I, that I thought of is 1 Timothy 4, 2, where Paul says, set an example in love and in purity. So that's a call towards both. Yeah. Yes, we're called to love, but yes, we're also called to live pure, holy lives because God yeah. is for our good. Yeah, one thing I found ironic about this chapter is that it's talking about how we shouldn't act like um, God doesn't uh, God doesn't care. God has bigger things to worry about, and yet all you hear from cultural messages is how important our sexuality is. And I think in terms of the identity conversation, it seems like is that really the most important thing about us? Like, it is an important piece, but it's not the most important piece. That's a good point. And, um, yeah, and God does care about how we live. So the idea there is that um, if you're not allowing me to express the deepest, most inner core part of me... Right. Then you're not being loving and you're being stifled. Yeah. Then I've got to stifle my identity, but it's not the most inner core... My sexual desires are not the most inner core part of me, right? There's something else that's deeper in there. And I, I think that that's a cultural narrative that we need to challenge. Right. And, and sexual activity, rightly understood within the context of marriage, is about expressing love uh, in, in, the right, in the right way, in the right time. Right. Yeah. Good. All right. Thank you. Thanks.